Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello and welcome to video four. How do I use pixel streaming interaction and customization? So here is our sample project. We have our character that we can move around if we need to, and then I have a pixel streaming server running so it can stream out to this little web browser. And as you can see, it works like expected. Now I've added a new button here called kill the player. When I click on it, it's going to interact with the server, fire an event, kill the player, send information back to the client, and disable their button so they can no longer do it. And we're going to look at how that round trip works and how you would customize the things in both the HTML code, the JavaScript code, as well as the Unreal Engine editor itself using blueprints. Let me close that. We're going to refresh this, and we're going to go look at our code. Now, the way it works is on the player controller, when you're using pixel streaming, it's going to automatically add a pixel streaming input component. So if we get the player controller, get component by class, set it up for pixel streaming input component, we're now going to have a component that we can save out, which I'm doing right here so I don't have to get it every time, and check for events firing, and then also send events back to our client. Once we have our pixel component here, I'm going to go ahead and bind to the on pixel streaming input event. So pixel component, bind, pixel streaming input. We have the bind event to on pixel streaming input event. And that's going to fire off whenever we get input from our clients. Whenever our web clients fire off the event that we've set up, which I'll show you how to do here shortly, it's going to fire off this event. It's going to pass in a JavaScript object notation descriptor basically a string that contains JavaScript, and then we can do whatever we want with that. In this case, I'm firing off this other custom event here, getting the JSON string value from the pixel streaming component, so I can figure out exactly what they sent in, and then I'm doing something appropriately. Now let's go ahead and look at our code in here. Now these are the default files that come with the pixel streaming setup by default. I've just modified them slightly to work for our our needs. Here's our player. This is our player that we saw that we are using in the engine, in this case right here. This is the code for setting up this little system right here. And all I did was take an existing button, kick others, copied it over, and oh, it's off by one seriously. There we go. Copied it over and changed it to my appropriate needs. So I've got a text, I've got a name in here for kill player button as an ID so I can bind an event to it. You are going to need to know basic JavaScript. You should know some basic CSS and HTML if you want to style it to look a little better than I did. And uh, you're going to have to understand the JavaScript object notation format and what JavaScript objects are. You can just copy paste and make things work. That's basically what I did here, but it helps to make it more customized and more robust if you know what you're doing. So we have a button called kill player button. We need to bind an event to that. So I've gone ahead and set that in here. So I have two parts in here that I've edited, if we find them. So here's my custom event stuff right here. And then up here, I have, if we find it, I typed in custom. I tried to put things in the appropriate spot so that way I could make them um, consistent. So here is where the default system monitors those buttons. So using JavaScript, we're getting our element, kill player button. If it's valid, we're adding an on-click event to it. And in that case, I call a custom function called kill player and then put in the log kill button pressed. This is your basic. This is just basic JavaScript, grabbing an item and doing an event binding. If we go to our definition for kill player, this is where our custom code comes in for interacting with our server. So here's our descriptor. So we're making a JavaScript object called descriptor, I'm putting in kill player and true as my value. So kill player is my key, true is my value. If I need multiples, I could do something like, you know, um, change color, and I could pass in a string of something like blue if I want to, or hex value, whatever. We're going to send in that descriptor. It's going to take, we're going to use the emit UI interaction function, which is right here, and emit our descriptor back to our server. When our client's connected, when we call this, it emits it back to any of the servers we're connected to. This event will not fire if you're not connected. If we were to, for example, to go back to our host right here, and we were to click our button, it's going to 
Obviously call our code, but there's no server connected, so nothing's going to happen. Once this fires off, we go back into our code here. That is when the event here will receive it. It's going to grab our descriptor, and then we're going to parse that JSON string. In this case, I want to see if there's a field name of kill player. Now, you remember before I passed in the other one called change color. So this is what you would do. You take your JSON string, parse it out, find the field name, see if that field name is in there. Once it's in there, you can see what they passed in. In this case, I don't care what they passed in. As long as this gets fired, I'm going to do the action. But in your case, the string value, for example, may be change color for the descriptor for your field name, which means your string value could be blue, red, or green, and then you can act accordingly. So once I have what I want and I know what I'm going to do, then we're going to do something. In this case, I'm destroying the actor. But before I destroy the actor, I want to go ahead and send a response back to the client. So I use the send pixel streaming response node. Grab the pixel component. I can do send, and we get send pixel streaming response. And it's really simple. You're sending back something. It's just a generic string. And again, it could be something simple like player killed that I simply want them to fire off of, or it could be a JavaScript object notation object itself, a JSON string. You can create a JSON string like you normally would, or you can use the add JSON string value helper node right here. Basically, you put in your previous descriptor, which could be blank in this case, put in your field name that you want. Maybe I want, um, you know, new score, and then the string value could be four. So I'm going to pass in these values. It's going to output a new descriptor, a new string, and tell me if it was okay. And then you could continually loop through adding new things, and it will create a JSON object notate, JSON object for you in the correct format using this helper. So in this case, we're just going to send back the response, player killed, and then destroy my actor. We'll go ahead and save that. We'll go back into our code. Inside of our code, well, we have something called handle UE4 response with a variable type of data passed in. And it's a function. This can be whatever you want to call it. This is simply the name I named. All that matters is you're going to have your code listen for the handle responses event fired off from the server. And it's going to call this function in response. Simple as that. So you care about having this code here. Add a response event listener. What it's going to be listening for handle responses that's going to be what we get when we fire off our response here and then what's going to happen which is my handle ue4 response function here in this case it's going to pass in data i could json parse if it's a, a javascript object notation object i got i know it's redundant but if you pass in a json object maybe you want to use json parse to parse that object and then do something appropriately in this case i'm just passing in strings so I switch based on the data, which is my string. In case of player killed, for example, let me tap these to make it easier. I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to log out, player was killed, event happened. Then I'm going to grab that kill player button and disable it. It's JavaScript. You can do whatever you want with it. You're basically passing messages back and forth from the server to the client's listening and passing information from the client's listening back to the server. Simple as that. So if we look at this in a round trip format, we're going to save this. You can see the code here that I created. We're going to go back into Blueprints. We're going to save this. We're going to play that out. Pull up my host here. Keep in mind, there's nothing I can do on the host right now if I'm not connected to the server. I don't have the server running, which means I don't have anything to connect to. Now that I can connect, we'll go and connect. We're going to clear this out. Here's our console. We're going to run this through back a full trip. Hit kill. You can see the kill event function was called when the kill button was pressed. Then we got our information on the server. It killed the player. Then we sent an event back. The handle UE4 response function was called. And the player was killed. Event has happened. So again, we went ahead, bound all of our information. When we needed to do something from the code, we went ahead and passed in a JSON script back to the server right here. Once it was received back on our server, that's not the right one, we parsed it found what we wanted, did something appropriately, in this case sent back the word player killed as our descriptor and killed our player. The code was like listening right here for the responses, handled it, 
switched based on the data. Oh, here's our player killed code. Went ahead and disabled our button. And that's our complete round trip. And that's it. That is the basics of interaction and customization for the pixel streaming. Now, you didn't see a ton of customization there because I'm not an artist. I can't really customize things very well. But you do have the appropriate web page here that you can see from Unreal Engine's website. Under Pixel Streaming, you have a bunch of sections. Customizing the player web page is basically what we covered here. It covers the default information, such as the scripts that are required for interaction back and forth, as well as how you should customize it. it tells you your default places. You also have the ability, for example, to completely disable input. So by binding to blank functions, you can disable things like the mouse, touch events, keyboard events, and not allow them to interact. You can make it where it's just a visual representation of something that's going on. And then how you can customize your widget, your cursor, and items like that from the remote client. And then the blueprint events that we just covered here, including sending data back and forth, and like I mentioned before, sending in and parsing JSON objects. And that's it. That is the basics of how do I customize and interact using Pixel, Pixel Streaming.